welcome to the second GLU colloquium. My name is Dr. Zainal Arifin Ahmad. I'm currently fellow with the Academy of Sciences Malaysia and formerly I was with University Science Malaysia as well as University Tenaga National. I also do some work with our friends in University Technology Petronas and for MMU and now I'm working with UniKL. So I'm here to share with you my thoughts on how to enhance pedagogical approaches in your teaching and learning. Now, one of the things that we as lecturers are uh, tasked, we are to deliver knowledge. But I think one of the things that we have to think about is that we are not the one passing on the knowledge. We are now co-creator of knowledge with our students. So that is a departure from the traditional mindset. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to share with you a few thoughts and with uh, your permission, I will address this both to the lecturers and to the students. So starting with the students, how do you prepare yourself for the workplace 4.0 or industry 4.0? One of the things that you must prepare yourself are the competencies. And in the classroom, you must make sure that you acquire the 20 industry 4.0 competencies. Now, where do I find this information? It's all in the websites, in the internet. So you are responsible to do that. And the lecturers will assist you in the course curriculum or the uh, syllabus to identify what are the activities, what are the topics that may be relevant to help you to acquire these competencies. In the slides that I'll be showing later, you will see some of these competencies. So what you have to do now first you have to acquire them through your classroom exercises and also through the uh, sharing in class. And secondly, you have to demonstrate it through your resume. Because one of the things that the employers are looking for is that do you have all of these competencies so that you can perform in the workplace? So I'm going to teach you some of the ways to do this. And one of the best ways to do this is for you to actually pack what competency to what topic in the classroom that you are going to be learning today. Now, for the lecturers, it is now our responsibility to highlight to the students that through the course syllabus, through our course objectives, the uh, what they call LOs, learning outcomes, how we are helping them to acquire all of these competencies for Industry 4.0. Now, what you need to do is actually to map out which of these Industry 4.0 competencies are being addressed in your course, in your courses. Now, one of the things that you'll find is that you're not going to address all 20 of them in one course. That should be done throughout the whole program. But what's more importantly is that when you do it, you make sure that you are helping the students acquire the competencies. Now, how do you acquire it? Let me give you a simple acronym. It's called TEACH. Okay, so what do you do? First, you need to teach with passion. You need to create interest in your students. You must make them feel or fall in love with the subject matter. Do not lecture them. Make them co-curator of knowledge. Yeah? So that is teaching with passion. Now, what you need to also do is draw out from the students the experiences. Now, how do you do that? Rather than coming to class, being all prepared, preparing your slides, flip your classroom. Let the student find out before they come to class. Let them share with you what they know about the subject matter. A is then for you to actually be more uh, applied in your approach. Yeah? When you are more applied in your approach, that means you become more creative. Yeah? Just now I mentioned you need to use um, flip classroom. How about design thinking? Yeah? Apply design thinking in your classes. Think about the students first, not the curriculum or the subject matter. What do they need to know? What do they need to understand so that your subject matter can be remembered better when they go out in the workplace? Okay. Second last is for you to be creative. Now, one of the things that you will observe is that there are many ways to impart knowledge. 
lecturing is one of the worst way of doing it. Yeah, you need to be make uh, use of all the technologies available to make use of all the time available in class. You only have an hour with them. Don't lecture them. And lastly, hutology and humility. Now, what is hutology or hutology? Hutology is basically to learn from your student. All of us have been trained on pedagogy, how to teach the student, and andragogy, how to make the students the self-directed learners. It's time for us to now practice hutology, whereby we now learn from the students, draw out from them. Okay? So with that, ladies and gentlemen, teaching is exciting. Teaching is our passion. So if you are going to interest the students, to acquire all of this Industry 4.0 competencies, teach with passion, and then draw it out from the students. Don't lecture them. So have I given you a clue on how to enhance your teaching and learning? Take care. Hi, everyone. My name is Adam Brimo, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of OpenLearning.com. It's great to be here with all of you today, uh, and I'm really honored to be invited uh, to have a short chat. Um, I want to share a little bit about Open Learning, uh, some of the things that we've been doing to support you, and also some of the opportunities uh, for MOOCs for you as you move online. So just to give you a little background, um, we actually started Open Learning about uh, six years ago now in Sydney, Australia. And since then, over 1.5 million students around the world have taken courses through the platform. Uh, but the courses are designed by educators just like you. And one of the exciting things that we've seen is that there are educators all around the world designing really interesting, really engaging, uh, and really social courses uh, for students, both their own students on campus, but also students around the world who want to learn. So there's really two goals uh, for what we're doing. Um, we're here to help you increase access to education and to help increase the quality of education around the world. Now, obviously, uh, increasing quality and understanding quality can be quite a challenging um, area uh, with many different views. Um, but one of the things we try and focus on is by providing a platform to you to deliver the best education, the best learning experience that you can. And one of the ways we do that is by focusing on an approach which is uh, generally called social constructivism. So the idea is that students learn best when they're actively engaged, when they're intrinsically motivated, when they feel empowered, when they enjoy what they're doing. So when students really want to learn, that's when we see them learning best. And Open Learning as a company and as a platform is here to help make that possible. So that might take the form of things like uh, project-based learning, uh, activity-based learning, reciprocal teaching, uh, peer-based learning. And the idea that students are you know, doing activities, reflecting on those experiences, producing a portfolio, uh, and helping each other out. Now, all of this is possible online, but it's only possible because people like you, the lecturers, are actually building courses and thinking about the best ways to educate students. And as you know, when you, the student walks into the classroom, you have the opportunity to see them face to face. You can work closely with them, understand what their challenges are, and really tailor the lesson to them. Now, when you move online, it's actually going to be a slightly different experience. Rather than all of the, all of the work and all of the effort um, coming in at the sort of face-to-face -face or facilitation stage, you'll spend a lot more time actually designing the course itself up front. So actually thinking about what the learning outcomes are, how the activities you're designing match up to those outcomes, and how you can help the students best achieve those outcomes. All of that will happen before a single student joins your course. And that's actually, I think, quite a, a, a big change sometimes from when we teach or we tutor students face to face. But it is an exciting opportunity as well, because the course that you design and develop could be used by students in Malaysia, across Malaysia, but also around the world. Um, there'll, be pe there'll be students who you've never seen or met from places you've never visited who are going to be learning from you and with you in your course. So it is quite an amazing opportunity. But beyond helping the student, there's actually a lot of other opportunities that MOOCs will present as well. Um, one of them is that it will actually increase the awareness of the university itself. There'll end up being more students around the country and around the world who know about the university and who actually are interested in taking courses from there. They may have never come to Malaysia before. They may have never studied in Malaysia. Um, but now they'll be able to take a course. 
On top of that, some of the things that you develop in your MOOC can actually be applied directly for your face-to-face -face or your blended learning courses as well. So the types of activities that you design, uh, the data that you collect from the course, the research that you'll be able to do on the way students are learning um, through the course, all of that can actually help contribute to providing a better learning experience for students on campus as well as online. In addition to that, we're seeing that there are actually working professionals who are starting to take MOOCs from universities. Now, these working professionals might be interested in learning a new skill, understanding a new technology, changing the way they think. And that's going to be critical as we approach the fourth industrial revolution. We're actually seeing more and more uh, professionals, people who have either graduated recently or have been working for 10 or 20 or 30 years, wanting to retrain and reskill. And they're actually looking towards the universities and to lecturers like you to achieve that. They're going to be looking at your courses, they're going to be enrolling in your courses, and they're going to be applying the knowledge they're gaining directly in their workplace. So it's actually going to be quite exciting because the courses that you design can directly contribute to preparing workers for the fourth industrial revolution. Now, that's quite a big opportunity, but it's also a great responsibility. And I think what that means is that the courses that you're designing um, have to be you know, of a very high standard. The quality has to be there. And I think you know, this initiative that you're embarking on is important uh, for the university. It's important for the country. But it's also going to be very exciting for you um, because you'll get to know that the students going through the course, you'll be able to support them. They'll learn from the activities uh, you know, you're designing. And you'll find that there'll be professionals around the world who can get new jobs or retrain for different jobs uh, because of the course that you've developed. So you know, from us at Open Learning, we're very honored to be a part of this. We're very honored to support you as best we can. Uh, Open Learning as a company uh, was founded in Sydney, Australia about six years ago. But now you might, be, you might already know, you might be pleased to know, that our largest office is actually in Malaysia. Um, we now have over 30 staff in our office in Sydney, over 45 in our office in KL, and then many other staff around the world. Um, so I'm here in Malaysia at our office in KL, uh, and I invite you to come visit us now and then. Um, and you can probably also uh, directly speak to our support team. We've got phone support and email support uh, in Malaysia from our Malaysian team. We have a whole learning design team as well who's there to assist uh, if you want assistance in redesigning your courses. And we actually have a range of online courses as well, MOOCs that we've developed on how to design the best online courses you can, how to apply instructional design practice, and how to facilitate a course for active learning. So we're here to support you, uh, but I'm very excited that you're building your MOOCs and that you're going to contribute to preparing future generations for the fourth industrial revolution. So I hope you have a wonderful colloquium, and I look forward to seeing you again sometime in Malaysia. Have a great day. Bye-bye.